Hey, Kevin, you gonna push my buttons like that? Hey, hey, hey! Don't put that on camera. <laughs> yeah, setting up the Longevity MIGWELL 250 MP over here. You know, MP for multiple pulse. Gonna play with the, the double pulse feature and just trying to get all the parameters set before I get over there and start to weld. All the way over here, pre-flow. Okay, I got that set. The pulse amps. Dang it. The pulse amps at 40 amps. And the arc force. Let's just set that at zero. Are you going to tell us what all these things are? Yeah, yeah, I'll go over that. The pulse time. No. The pulse time. Let's uh, speed that one up a little. And then the pulse frequency. Uh, let's go there. Welding current. Okay, so we'll turn him down a little. And then over there for volts. And then we got the burn back. That's good. I like that. And then the burn back voltage. That's good. And then the, the post flow. The pulse amps and the arc force pulse amps okay when the machine goes from your welding voltage to your pulse voltage or pulse amps so that's that's at the bottom of the pulse basically so you're going to go from let's say 100 amps to 47 i think it had had it set out so that's what your pulse amps are at the bottom of the pulse the arc force that's you're kind of setting the inductance I believe that's the right word. Um, it, it's how well the arc actually digs. It's how, it, it, you kind of set your penetration that way. If you crank it up more, you get more penetration. You, know, you get a you get a harsher sound. You get you know a crisper arc. You know it, it wants to just bite in there. The uh, the pulse time, of course. You know that's how long the pulse is. You know between between the peaks when it drops into the pulse. Pulse time, back up to your welding again. Pulse frequency, how often do the, does that happen in the pulse time? Got that? Yep. Okay. And then over to the welding current, you know, that's that's the high side. That's what you're actually doing the welding with. Your uh, your end amps. And, and, you know, so when you, uh, if it was set in like 4T, which this machine will do. It'll do 2T or 4T. So 2T, you pull the trigger, it welds. When you let go, it stops. But it has 4T, just like on a TIG. So you can pull the trigger, it'll start welding, let go with the trigger. It'll keep welding all by itself. you got to pull the trigger again to get it to stop. Well, when you pull the trigger the second time and hold it, it will go from, let's say, 100 amps, it will drop down to whatever that end amps is set at, cool itself off in however long you take it to do that. And then you let go of the trigger and it stops. And then you have the burn back time. You know, that's when you when you let go of the trigger and the arc stops, the machine gives it just a tiny little bit more voltage or a little bit of amps to burn that rod, burn that wire back up towards the gun. So you don't have this big stick out hanging out there. You know, so that's burn back and then the burn back voltage, that's with how much you tell it. You know, give it however many you know, milliamps, amps, whatever you want to put out there to burn that wire back however far you want it to come back. So what's the difference between double pulse and single pulse? Well, you get twice as much for the same amount of money. Awesome. No. <laughs> single pulse on this machine, you can adjust your... Uh, you can adjust your amperage, and you can adjust the time. Double pulse allows you to adjust the, uh, the pulse time, the pulse frequency, and the pulse amps, the arc force. You know, it, just, it gives you a, a whole lot more parameters that you can set, you can dial in there. You know, the, the single pulse is the, the quick and easy mode, double pulse, a little more complicated, but a whole lot more variable. And pulse in general, the benefit is? Well, it allows guys like me to weld on thinner metal. So you can still have that high amperage, you know, that high voltage, you know, with the MIGs or amperage with the TIGs. 
you can still get your welding done. You'll have enough power to melt the metal, add your filler, but then it immediately, you know, it just, you know, in microseconds, it will go from, you know, again, let's say 100 amps, it will drop down to 50. You still keep the metal warm. You know, you're not going stone cold with it, but it helps to freeze the puddle. It helps to stop it from, from uh, dropping through. You know, it, it, it's just, it allows you to work with thinner metal and still get a good weld with it with a bigger machine. So you get the penetration without all the warping and and blow through. Yeah. No, if you do it correctly, I'm still learning, but yeah, if you do it correctly, that's what you get. So let me put my head on and get your glasses and we'll run a bead over here and see how I did. over there quick and I'll put it back to just straight MIG you know with no pulse and I'll do a little bit more you see you can you know, hear the difference Pulse welds, we'll look at the straight MIG welds with no pulse, you know, see if we can see any kind of difference in it. You see it right there, you know, the weld is kind of tall. You know, all of them. Now, now, this is the pulse welds. These are all a little tall, meaning the bead is, you know, kind of standing up, you know, real tall rather than being flat on the metal. So, you know, to me, that would say, okay, I had it a little too cold. So I could have either put more voltage in there, more amps in there, you know, cut back on the amount of pulse time. So make the bottom of the piece, you know, bottom of the pulse smaller, give me more time at welding amperage up here for welding voltage. I mean, I did okay. You know, I got, pen I got penetration. I got enough weld there where now I can come in and grind it down a little bit. You know, we just flush it in, smooth it off. That's all I'm doing. You know, it's just a cosmetic weld. It's not really a structural weld. See, this weld was there already. This is where I started with no pulse. There, there, you know, little tall, little tall, flattened out a little, flattened out, flattened out, flattened out. Just more practice, I think, <laughs> trying to get used to that machine. You know, there's so many different variables you can play with. You know, it makes it so, it makes it useful because you can do a lot of different things with it. But you've got to be able to wrap your brain around all those different functions over there. So. I'll come in with the grinder, you know, I'll come back and get that one that I missed and fill in that little hole with the pulse, you know, to fill that hole in. I'll, I'll go ahead and change, you know, play with that pulse a little more, where I can just fill that in all in one go, rather than having to sit there and stitch it together. You know, but get those two, get the grinder, round that off, smooth that in a little bit. You know, I'll probably have a couple little boo-boos i got to come back, give it a little bead, fill it in, you know, and then grind it all smooth. <laughs> so speaking of that, I'm going to get back to it. Oh, don't forget the subscribe button. We'll see you guys later. Hey, Kevin, you pushing someone's buttons over there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hang on. Ah. Ah. Trying to set up the longevity uh, 